Apparently, Thursday is taking your trash out day for Bush Road, as we got two new strides for the premium collection. And just like last week, these two are pretty questionable. Hey Carvados, welcome back to another extra edition of Card for an Update during these premium collection times. And just like last week, we've got a couple of new strides for the premium collection and we can look up to the upcoming YouTuber reveal with the last card reveal for us YouTubers with the card that we're going to get from Maxime Solemn from Solemn Vanguard. But before all that, let's dive into the new cards as today we got the new stride for Dark Regulars and we got the stride for Angel Feathers. The Dark Regulars one had some big shoes to fill as it's following up from the infamous Gastille Dominance that is one of the most powerful strides that came out Premium Collection 2019. So this is following in some big footsteps. And for the Angel Feather one, well, it's basically a follow-up stride that comes from Raphael Mitra or something like that. I mean, the stride never saw play once the card was revealed and released in 2019. I mean, put your hands up if you played the card. Yeah, none of you out there are raising your head. And if you do, you are lying. But without further ado, let's dive into these two strides and see what they can do for their clans. And if they're anything up to snuff. But as you probably have uh, seen in the intro, not much. All right, so let's start off with the new Dark Regular stride as we have this card, Upheaval Chief Gal Thunt. And... It's pretty interesting artwork. It reminds me of a certain anime. Uh, probably anybody that's seen it knows exactly what I'm referring to. But it has one ability and one ability alone. And its ability is Auto and Vanguard Circle. When it attacks, costs counter plus one, turn a card from a G zone face up, soul charge five, draw the same number of cards as trigger units that were soul charged by this effect. And until the end of the battle, when your opponent will call cards from hand to the Guardian Circle, he or she must call the same number of cards as normal units that were soul charged by this effect or more at the same time. So this is basically one effect that has two outcomes. You counter plus one and you soul charge five. For every trigger, you draw one. For every normal one, you add onto your battle door effect. So if you soul charge three triggers and two normal units, you draw three cards of this effect and all your cards have the normal battle door effect where your opponent needs to guard with two or more cards. If you soul charge two triggers and three normal units, you draw two cards and you get the battle door effect that force your opponent to guard with three cards or more, which is similar to Varian's hard lag. And basically this varies depending on how many triggers and how many normal units you soul charge. So for a counter blast and a flip, it's fine because you mainly go for what is the outcome. So you either get draws or you get the battle door effect. But the fact that you also soul charge helps with dark regulars quite a bit as everything is revolving around soul. However, the problem is this threat costs a counter blast. So your opponent has another reason to damage Nayu, which was already one of the main things that you do against dark regulars as Castillo Dominos also costs a counter blast. And Soul Charge 5 isn't really a lot. Sure, as a first ride, it gives you more options than Balam, as Balam can only Soul Charge you two cards at the first ride. But as a first ride, you can also just go in Gastille, and Gastille gives you two Soul Charges, and probably even more. And it also allows you to do all kinds of really Vanguard shenanigans with all the options that you have available to it, and it gives way more power. And if you go in the late game scenarios, then Gastille is way better than this card in every situation, and even then Balam gets better. So this has some ups to as a first try, but the moment the game prolongs longer, this becomes worse and worse and worse in comparison. There is, however, a interesting scenario that can come up with this card, which allows this to be useful. Because there can be a situation where you get so many normal unit soul charts in your soul that the battle door effect becomes almost unguardable in certain situations. As if your opponent is forced to guard with four cards or five cards at the same same time, that can be really annoying, especially with dark regulars that already swings with annoying cards. But they don't really multi-tag with their natural cards. Sure, we have Enigmatic Assassin, but that doesn't really do a lot. The most multi-tacking the Dark Regulars does is via the Vanguard, and we can do that with Gastille Dominas, where it can copy something like NLK or Master Fit. This card does not do that, so you cannot do that. 
But what's interesting about this ability, if you hit four or five cards, then something like Hope on Damp becomes unguardable. As your opponent is forced to guard with intervals of 20k if they want to guard against Hope on Damp. But if at the same time you force your opponent to guard with four or five cards at the same time, there is a situation where they cannot even create 20k shield with that many cards. Because they probably don't have the right combination of cards to achieve that. Unless they have an excessive amount of great freeze. Or they're just going to waste their PGs. And that are also great zeros shield value. So there could be some interesting shenanigans. But then again because you cannot multi tag You probably cannot really capitalize on this card. But besides that this card doesn't really do anything. Because it's mainly RNG. It's just a setup card. But Dark Regulars doesn't really need setup cards anymore. We already got Balam and Gastille's already pretty deadly on first try. And for the Soul Charting itself, all our normal support will carry that for us. They will take care of all the Soul Charging. Our Vanguard doesn't need the Soul Charts anymore. We need a Vanguard in Dark Regulars that kills, that do stuff, that multi tags or that really makes it annoying for your opponent to survive next turn. So this card does neither of that. So... Yeah, it's to be expected. Their previous premium collection stride was insane. One of the best cards. So this one will probably be bad. And this basically goes into the uh, prediction that I had with the previous videos with all these premium collection strides. That the per that the strongest strides from last year are going to get weak strides now. And weak strides from last year are going to get strong strides for now. But at the same time, that prediction is thrown out the window... With the Angel Feather Stride. As we all know, the Angel Feather Stride from Premium Collection 2019 was trash. But the stride that they got this time isn't really all that better. As they got Holy Seraph Basael. Or Basasael. And her abilities are Auto Vanguard Circle, Generation Break Free, one place until the end of this fight, your damage zone becomes 7 cards to lose. If your G zone has 5 or more face up cards, one place, it becomes 8 instead of 7. So this card allows you to have more damage before you lose the fight. Normally we lose at 6 damage. This card can increase that to 7 or it can increase it to 8. So it basically stalls you the game even more. And it's free. It's just on place and it does its thing. Before we talk about that, let's go over its second ability. And then we're going to analyze this card in its complete picture. Its second ability is Act on Finger Circle, cost Countless 4, and until the end of turn, when your opponent would call cards from hand to the Guardian Circle, he or she must call the same number as number of cards in your damage zone or more at the same time. So this is once again the Battle Door effect, but it looks at your damage to then apply that to the Battle Door effect. This can be insane if you have 6 or 7 damage. Because that makes it almost impossible for your opponent to guard every single attack. And this works pretty nicely with Rescue. As Rescue can multi-attack. And that can be devastating in this comparison if you utilize the disc. This, so Angel Fighters get a very offensive card with this card. So you, you, you think this is excellent. Well, it is on first glance. But when you actually start to look at the details of this card and how it actually works... Oh boy, it's not looking too good. Because first off, each generation break free doesn't flip and it's on place. So this means to utilize this effect, so to increase only from 6 to 7 damage, you need to stride this thing as second stride because if you went first, so if you stride in first, you go into a stride that flips something, so you have GB2, and then you stride into this thing and you have GB3. But if your opponent's stridden first, then even still then, you cannot go into this stride as first stride. Because you G-guard, you go to GB1, you stride in this thing, you have GB2. But it doesn't flip. So it doesn't activate. So even then, it's on your second stride. So that's already pretty bad. It's really, really slow. And then to get from 7 to 8, that's GB5. So that means that's either your third stride... Or your 4th stride. And because you go probably into this to increase to 7. That means you go from GB2 to GB3. Which forces you to G-guard first. Before you can go into this thing to get to the 8 damage. So not only do you rely on probably G-guarding first. Somewhere along the line. But you also need to go into this thing as your 3rd stride. 3rd stride in premium is 
ungodly slow. That's really, really, really slow. And and basically, this get an extra damage before you die is effectively a different way to say heal one damage. The comparison between both effects is basically you can take one more damage before you die. Only one case heals one, the other says, well, you can take another one. So, yeah, it's heal one for free. Okay, not bad, but we already had strides within Angel Feathers that could heal. So this, this doesn't really make any sense. It's just once again a heal another card. But then you can say, well, it works pretty nicely into its second ability as that will make it empower even further. Well, the problem in that aspect is, is that that's even slower. Because if this thing is already your first stride to get to a damage, that means you cannot capitalize on that extra damage. Same as when going to 7. Because you can now go to 7. But it's still, you need to wait till your opponent's turn to deal you that extra damage. And then you can go into your next turn to then capitalize on having that extra damage. So... If you go into this thing as your first try to activate this Generation Break 5 to go to potentially 7 damage and still live, then on your fourth stride you go into this and activate this Counter Lash 4 ability. That's no way viable in Premium. Premium is a landscape where you are going to kill your opponent basically on first try. The fact that this card only becomes active in some capacity on second try is outright unplayable. And then on first try or fourth try, yeah, that's it becomes really unlikely. Even if you get the extra damage in premium, that extra damage doesn't really amount to much as most powerful decks or meta relevant decks can push like three, four, maybe even five damage in a turn if things go right. And with this stride, you cannot really utilize your standard uh, cards as you're not allowing you to get value out of your new vanguards as most of their value engines are in their main phase with their act abilities for Malkov, Malax, and Metatrons. Those act abilities aren't available. Sure, you can do the unright heal a card, but that's about it. That's just more stalling, and it stalling doesn't win you games. But that's basically its first ability. I think this card's main effect is in its second ability. You don't look at the Generation Break Free. That's just a nice thing. It's interesting. It's unique. But that's not what is going to make this card good. It's its second ability, the Act Counter Blast 4, that allows you to do an increased Battle War effect. Just in a normal sense, if you can have 5 damage and only die at 6, it's still very powerful to have a Battle War effect of 5. But there is a problem in this, as it's Counter Blast 4. Your opponent can just deny this skill outright by just keeping you at 3 face-up damage. And sure, you can go into this thing multiple times, so you can increase your damage zone, so you can survive multiple things. And sure, that can be the case, but just as I explained, Premium excels in just ramping up damage like crazy as if there is no tomorrow. Because if you stall, that means you give your opponent to gather more power, more value, more things. As most cards in Premium Collection nowadays also skill very effectively with more G-Zone face-up or when the game progresses. I mean... Gear Chronicle can just sit back, relax, and just put more cards in the bind zone, and then work its way to a free four-turn play. And sure, you can take six damage, but if you need a guard against four turns, you're probably gonna die. Same as with Narukami. All right, you stall, stall for quite a significant time, but they're just gonna ramp up your bind zone. And the moment that you actually want to do something, they stride into their new stride, and they just destroy your field, they ripped out your entire drop zone, and now they're gonna rip up your hand by a lot of cards, and they're gonna start multi attacking with about six to seven attacks. Yeah, that you can take free damage extra doesn't mean crap in that situation. I don't think that this card for Angel Feathers is gonna do a lot. There are gonna be situations where it will do something, as its second ability is very powerful, and if you can stall for game long enough, then sure, maybe you can utilize its Generation Break 3 and Generation Break 5 skill, but in the way that Premium is right now, this card probably does absolute zero. It's, it's at least better than the Premium Collection 2019 stride, but it's nowhere near where it should be. As also in the situation where your Generation Break 3 or Generation Break 5 or those effects can activate finally, why go into this thing? If you can go into your Ultima and do the loop plays that Age of Fetter already has access to. As also with that play, it only costs you two counterblasts to just go into Ultima. 
that's a lot harder to damage an eye if you also have discarded is counter plus four. So yeah, it's not a great first strike because it's impossible as a first strike, and it's not great as a late game strike as there are better options that probably outright kill your opponent. The only interesting thing with this card is because you go over with extra damage. Cards that shoot an extra damage, like we've seen with the Zero of Dragon Dust, or the ro old Royal Paladin Stride, or even Phantom Blessed Dragon in V, that shoots a damage that looks at your damage zone and looks if you have 4 or less. Those cards will be less effective if, as you're probably already over 5 or more at most of the games, so that 3 damage you're shooting probably don't mean a lot. And this is the same with the Purge. But, then again, the Purge has a field day with this card because now they can drive checks like five or six or seven times because your damage zone is increasing as well. So that's an interesting thing. Also, another note is that this card also counteracts Geese to some extent as the shoot five damage is less effective if you die at eight. So yeah, there is interesting interaction between this card. It skills pretty neat with the fact that you can increase your damage zone. But this doesn't really work for Angel Feathers right now. They already got tons and tons of of stall cards. And the counter blast forward to kill? Yeah, that that isn't really viable. So, yeah. Sorry, Angel Feather players. I probably don't think your time is ju year just yet. Maybe 2021 is your year. But that's basically the two reveals for Premium Collection 2020. Yeah, arguably not the best. And hopefully next Thursday we have two better strides. But if this pattern continues, then probably next week the other two cards that we're going to get aren't going to fare even better. So I hope that your clan isn't up next. And the next Supreme Collection stride reveal will probably be Saturday when Maxime Solemn Vanguard is going to reveal his stride. And my bet is that it's going to be a Grand Blue Stride. It can be Aqua Force, as he has been posting a lot of Aqua Force at the beginning of his channel. Only led in the last couple of months, maybe year or so, he has been transitioning to more Grand Blue focused content. So I'm not sure if Bushrod pick has picked up on that. That they're going to give him a Grand Blue Stride or not. So we have to wait and see what he's actually going to give. And then the question arises, how good would it be? As currently the standings are right now with the premium, with the YouTuber card reveals. As currently as I see is that Kai of WCC Stride is on the bottom. Then we have different fights DP Stride. Which is actually pretty damn solid. But it's not good enough to oh, topple my Gear Chronicle reveal. As that Stride is just too insane. Am I biased? Absolutely. But... Do I care? No. But where would Maxine Stride reside? Would be between my Gear Chronicle Stride and the DP Stride of Different Fight? Would it be between the Different Fight Stride and the Kagero Stride of Kai? Or would it be even below that? As the Ghosty Stride was pretty good, Obadiah, but it wasn't a, an offensive card. So maybe to get an offensive card. And if it's a really solid offensive card, maybe it's even better than my Stride. But would they do that? Nah, I don't think so. Gear Chronicle reigns supreme, definitely. But that's basically everything for me today. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of these new reveals for Dark Regulars and Angel Feathers. Are you disappointed with the reveals? Or do you actually see an interaction or a potential within these cards that I might have overlooked in this video? But as always, guys, this video has been brought to you by our lovely patrons over at patreon.com. So Stranger Insider, you guys are amazing. If you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, then head over to patreon.com slash Vanguard Insider and become a Patreon today. But with that said, I'm Mr. Time Leap, and I'll see you guys in the next one!